In this video, I'm going to use complex numbers to derive some very useful trigonometric identities. These identities involve the sum of angles. So if we take two angles, theta and phi, and we take their sum and input that into the cosine and sine functions, we're going to have some expressions that tell us what that is equivalent to. And that's going to help with solving a lot of algebraic expressions. It's going to help with doing calculus. It's going to help with doing integration. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to write down is these complex exponentials. So these are special exponentials because they're not just e to the x, they're e to the i x. That's the form of these guys. So we're going to have e to the i theta, and we're going to multiply that by e to the i phi. So theta and phi are the two angles that we're inputting into cosine and sine. And we're particularly interested in the sum of theta and phi. So this over here is actually a very neat way of packaging up cosines and sines. e to the i something is actually equal to the sum of cosines and sines. But the sine has an imaginary unit out the front. So what we actually have is a real component and an imaginary component. So these guys are very useful ways of representing complex numbers. And all of the complex numbers that are represented by e to the i theta sit on the unit circle in the complex plane. So this is a very, very useful expression that we have over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that this is equivalent to some various forms. And then we're going to uh, assign different parts of the expressions to each other. And we're actually going to derive these trigonometric identities. First of all, I want to use an exponential law to join these guys together. So this exponential law is going to tell me that this is actually the same as e to the i theta plus phi. So can you see what I did over here? If you're multiplying two exponentials, you can use exponential laws to turn this into the exponential of a sum. So these guys add together when you multiply the exponentials. So over here we have theta plus phi. I've just factored out this imaginary unit i. And this over here we know is actually equivalent to the cosine of theta plus phi plus i times sine of theta plus phi. So this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find an expression for this and an expression for this. But using these exponentials, we actually we're going to take care of both of those trigonometric identities. So we want to have something uh, uh, that has just simple cosines and sines, because this is difficult to deal with. How do you differentiate this? Or how do you integrate this? How do you work with this in an algebraic expression? It's very difficult in this form. We want to turn this into something that just has cosine theta, sine theta, and those simple types of things. So let's do that. We have one form of this expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these exponentials to find another form, and then we're going to match these guys up. We're going to match this guy over here, this form, and this form to another equivalent form. And we're going to see that the real component matches with another real component, and the imaginary component matches with another imaginary component. And that's where the trigonometric identities are going to come from. So let's, let's go ahead and manipulate this. So in the same way that I've written this guy out in terms of cosines and sines, I'm going to do that for both of these guys. So this is actually equal to, I'm going to write the first one in brackets, this is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So that's this first one. That's this exponential over here. And we're going to multiply that by this exponential. And that's equal to cosine of phi, because that's the angle now. We've got phi plus i sine of phi. So that is what this is equivalent to. And all of these guys are equivalent to each other. So taking the sum of two angles inside the cosine and inside the sine is the same as multiplying these guys together. That comes from the property of the exponentials. That's one of those exponential laws. Now what we're going to do is we're going to expand this out. We're going to multiply each of these guys, and that's going to give us a bunch of terms. Then we're going to collect those terms, and we're going to put it into the form where we have a real component plus i times an imaginary component. It has to be in this form over here. And then we can match up the real components and the imaginary components. So first of all, we're going to have this guy multiplying this guy. So that's going to give us cosine of theta times cosine of phi. 
So that's just this guy times this guy. Now let's have a look at this guy times this guy. So we've got the first times the first, and let's have a look at the last one times the last one. So in both of these guys, we have a factor of i. So that's going to give us i times i, which is i squared, and i squared is equal to minus 1. So I'll write this over here. i squared, we know is the imaginary unit, and that's equal to minus 1. So when we multiply these guys together, that i squared is going to turn to a minus sign. So we're going to have sine theta times sine phi, but there's going to be a minus sign out the front. So we'll have sine theta sine phi, and there's a minus sign out the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some brackets around this, because this is our real component. And now we're going to have an imaginary component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to that i times something in brackets. And that something in the brackets is going to be our imaginary component. So both of these guys have come from multiplying the first times the first and the last times the last. But now what we want to do is we want to mix the terms together. So let's take this cosine of theta and multiply it by this sine of phi. Let's take these two inner terms. So the outer terms are going to give us a cos theta and a sine phi. Right? So that's what we're going to get from these guys over here. And you can see if we multiply these guys together, there is a single factor of i. And I'm going to factor that i out the front. So what we're going to get is cos theta times sine of phi. I'm going to add to that what we get from the inner terms, which is cos of phi times sine theta. So cos of phi times sine of theta. And here it is. So what do we actually have over here? This is the real component. And this is the imaginary component. And what we can do is we can identify this real component with this real component, and we can identify this imaginary component with this imaginary component. And that's going to give us two expressions. So I'll write down the expression that links these guys together. So we're going to get cosine of the sum of those two angles, theta plus phi. That is equal to cosine theta times cosine of phi. That's cosine of theta times cosine of phi minus sine of theta times sine of phi. So minus sine theta sine phi. That's our first trigonometric identity. Then what do we want? We also want to match this guy with this guy. So that's going to give us sine of these guys, the sum of these angles, theta plus phi. That is equal to what we have inside here. We have cos times sine, but what we're doing is we're swapping the angles. Here we have cos of theta sine of phi, and then we have cos of phi sine of theta. So let's do that. Let's put that over here. So what we have is cosine of theta sine of phi, and we're going to add to that cosine of phi, and we're going to multiply by sine of theta. So that's what we have. We've matched up the real components and the imaginary components. One thing I want you to look at this is I want you to see that if we set these two angles equal to each other, then what we're going to have is double the angle inside over here. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. What happens when we set this guy equal to this guy over here? What's going to happen? And make sure you watch the next video, uh, and then you'll find out what actually happens. So you can find that other video if you click over here.